What's up, everybody? Oh, man, is this even happening? Is it even going live? Do we even know what is happening? There. I've, uh, I've enabled the enabling... And stream health still doing something weird. I don't know what's going on today with the internet. Come on now, internet. Is it warmed up? <laughs> there we go. Now it's working. All right. What's up, everybody? It's Monday. Oh, it's totally Monday, you guys. It's Monday. Um, it's big time Monday. Big time Monday, big time Monday. And I just realized that my headphones are on maximum playback again. So let me just uh, turn these down real quick. <laughs> All right, there we go. Got the headphones turned down and it's bugging me because it's like on the floor and I can hear a little bit. And I don't know what's going on. With this little bit of my hair today, it just keeps sticking out sideways. And naturally, I'm monitoring myself, and I can just see that bit of the wall through my hairpiece. <laughs> it's a hell of a wig, you guys. Hell of a wig. But uh, good to see everybody here checking in on the early chat. we got the Fish Tank Barn and H-Town Tanker. What's up? Uh, and Rocky's Rocky, Jason R, Johan, whose messages were retracted. I don't know what that meant. What happened? Swift Aquarium, uh, Sopa Loco, It's Nature Man, Alyssa Bentley, Whoa, Wine, and Wet Sleeves is here today. You will notice little uh, avatar icons next to some of the people's names. What's that all about? Uh, those are people that have joined up. Those are people that have joined up in our membership deal here on YouTube. That is one of the ways that you can help support the channel if you do literally want it to be one of those people that is actually just supporting the channel, right? Cool. Uh, or you could go to Patreon and support that way, or you could go to Amazon and uh, click through the Amazon link and blah, blah, blah. Those kind of the three ways that it is right now. Oh, I guess there's another way too. Uh, you could buy stuff at... Uh, aquarium co-op through the affiliate link and then there we go those the four ways and we got that out of the way uh, but speaking of aquarium co-op I think uh, da, 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 where who's asking I think it was largemouth bass I think largemouth bass broke their um... oh yeah there it is I dropped the bottle and broke my pump <laughs> uh, on the easy green now First things first, the Easy Green comes with a pump top that gives you a pre-measured action, right? Gives you a pre-measured action for the Easy Green in the bottle that it came in. So uh, one of the most common things I've noticed recently is people are like, Corey made the bottle half the size. Yeah, it's concentrated. He made it more concentrated, right? So the bottle is smaller, so it's easier to ship, for easier for you guys to get faster. And uh, it has half a milliliter top on it, okay? On the new one. The old one has a one milliliter top, right? So that uh, you can keep track just by the pumps. You can just be like, I got a 30 gallon tank, three pumps, right? 
um, is I think what it is. Now, don't quote me on that, but that's pretty much uh, what I think it is, as far as I know, right off the top of my head. Now, to address those people that are like, the bottle is smaller, you get less now. Yes, it is more concentrated, okay? It's like 1% milk versus heavy cream, right? There's more density, it's more product, right? More product, more product versus the 1%. That's basically what you got going on. Second question I get about Easy Green all of the time they ask me, is Thrive better? <laughs> and I will tell you this. In my opinion, and via the analysis that I have done, Easy Green is as least as good as Thrive, and Thrive is as, at least as good as Easy Green, right? They're both really good. They both work fantastically. They both are made in the United States. So if you're in the United States and you want to be supportive of that kind of thing, right they were they both work really really well they're both produced by really cool dudes um and uh so if you eat whichever one you want to use feel free um if you happen to find a good deal on either one go for it in my opinion that's my opinion utilize it i personally use easy green it's easier for me to get a hold of it it's easier for me to measure it it's just easier altogether. So that's why I go that route. I do like Thrive. And um, speaking of specifically the company that makes Thrive, um, I think it's Nicole G. I don't know how he does it, but uh, his name's Colin. So um, I know him. I was uh, emailing with him the other day just because I, um, I was asking him specifically about some of his reactor reactors that he's making um i want to i want to test one of them out so i think i'm going to order one from him uh and uh, give it a try give it a try versus the the diy ones that i've built uh the co2 reactors he makes them his look a little bit cooler than mine because mine are made out of like home depot parts <laughs> so i want to try one of his out and see what it's like so i'm going to be uh, ordering one of those and i think the way that i look at it is like i think it was like 84 dollars or something like that so like it is a little bit more expensive but the way i see it like if it's worth it i'd make a video about it and then maybe there's people out there that don't want to build their own they could just order one of theirs um genus jasper says is there an affiliate link for german amazon yes germany is one of them that I do have an affiliate with. As far as I know, it doesn't need to be a separate affiliate off the top of my head. But yeah. Uh, good evening from Belgium. Oh, that's what's going on. If you guys don't know, out there in the world, the rest of the world, the regular parts of the world, uh, we experienced daylight savings time. This, uh, it's like Saturday night, Sunday morning. It's like 2 a.m. Sunday um, we changed the time of our clocks <laughs> forward an hour. So we will, uh, actually probably be seeing a lot more of the European audience here for the next six months until we change the clock back again, because it's at least early enough, uh, for people overseas to not be completely asleep at the beginning of the show. Uh, for instance, in, um, let's say the UK, it's only 11 o'clock at night, I think. That might be right, and I might be wrong. But either way, it's it's an hour earlier now for people in Europe <laughs> to have the show on. So, um, it's uh, that, yeah. So that's that's probably why we'll see a lot more European people than we have for the last couple of months. So everybody else has been uh, been asleep. Uh, Joel G from New Zealand on the other side of the planet says, love the easy green conspiracy. Yeah, there it's not really a conspiracy. It's, you know, you literally just made that uh, fertilizer. It's a liquid fertilizer. So you just made it more concentrated. And uh, a bunch of people freaked out because they're like, I'm getting a smaller bottle. It's like, yeah, but it's the same amount of doses, right? You know? Um, so, yeah. In a personal note... Today has been a pretty long day already. It's only 3.09 p.m. my time, but it has been a very long day already because uh, 
as you guys will see when we go over to the video this <laughs> as, this, as this swoops by that's the lovely olivia uh vicky and i's daughter we took her down uh and we got some more of her vaccinations today so uh we had to get out there early uh, with the baby take her out and uh, have the shots and you know all the crying from that and stuff so she's feeling a little burp. you know i got these shots guys you know so uh, i've been dealing with that and uh, it has been just crazy busy uh, those of you guys that are members i posted up yesterday uh, a picture of a giant pile of uh, sticks and branches and stuff that used to be a tree <laughs> we had a giant tree uh, we had this old like really crummy cherry tree that had grown into a giant um it had never been trimmed properly uh never really taken care of by whoever had lived here the hundred years before us um and so like at its base it's like this big around it's about 40 feet tall uh and it would just dump a ton of gnarly fruit in the um in the chicken yard and uh, I think that's one of the reasons that we, or one of the main reasons that we had the weird tree rats, the, this weird squirrel, rat, tree rats, squirrel, squirrel, monkey rats, whatever they were called. <laughs> we don't even know what they are. They're these really weird rats, but they've been gone ever since that tree uh, stopped fruiting. And so we ended up lopping that off. And, you know, for those of you that are following just YouTube wise, very exciting because um, I, one of the projects I'm going to be doing this year is grafting some different fruit to that old, uh, the base of that cherry tree. So it won't be gone and forgotten. I've saved about four feet of it, uh, but we got that whole tree taken down um, and disposed of most of it. We had a giant pile from that tree. Um, and then um, we had a giant pile from that tree and then... You know, we got rid of most of that along with also, um, what else did we do? We did a bunch of other stuff this weekend, which I cannot even recall right now. So it's a busy weekend. We got uh, our vac some, uh, the second round of vaccinations for our daughter. Um, and things are going uh, pretty well. Green Ranger is asking, is Easy Iron safe for shrimp? Yes, uh, it is safe for shrimp. Um, so definitely, you know, uh, feel feel fine in that route. Um, I tested it for about, I want to say about six months, maybe four months or something like that on um, my Neocaridina shrimp tank and uh, and another tank that I had set up uh, and I've been dosing it uh, with my crystal shrimp and stuff. So uh, not a problem uh, with easy green and easy iron uh, with, uh, with the shrimp. Not, not a problem at all. Uh, Barbara Jackson says, can I become a member from my phone or do I have to do it on my PC? I'm at my daughter's place helping her clean. Um, Candy just posted the link. It is a little bit difficult for people with an iPhone to, uh, access the join button for whatever reason. I don't know why, uh, the inner workings of YouTube sometimes are just super confusing, but that's just literally has been their explanation is like, it's hard to do to make it work. And I'm like, okay, I don't know why, but. Seems weird how they have billions of dollars and they can't make the join button work. I don't know. It's kind of weird. Uh, Paul Gunther is asking, I have some Java fern in my African cichlid tank and it's only two weeks in. It's starting to have some spots on it. Is there anything I'm doing wrong? Uh, I'm new to plants. Yeah, spots on it uh, are typically, it could either be a fungus or it could be um, a deficiency that you got going on. Oftentimes though, I will say with Java fern, if you have taken it from, you know, one place, shipped it across a country or whatever, you know, even if you just took it from a store and brought it home to different water and stuff like that, uh, it kind of goes through quite a bit uh, in order to, uh, you know, it, it just goes through quite a bit on top of it might be a fungus. But the upside is oftentimes it will seed when... Uh, uh, that does happen. So a lot of times you'll be able to get some new sproutlets from it. Uh, and just bear in mind, like that's kind of one of the things that you have to do with plants from time to time is just have some patience and sprout some new ones. Uh, I know that I've, I've felt the exact same feeling uh, in, in my past where I'm like, oh, I have to start from scratch with these plants. Uh, but that is a reality sometimes that we all have to deal with. Uh, you know, same thing you know, out on agriculture side, out in the garden, whatever you want, you know, however you want to look at it, uh, it definitely takes a while. 
The Kaiser says my pH has been slowly climbing and it's now sitting at 8.8. Should I worry about high pH or is it more important to keep it consistent? Uh, well, 8.8 is pretty high. So even if you are keeping it consistent, um, 8.8 is generally pretty high unless you just have like African cichlid tank with no plants or anything. You just have, if you just have cichlids in 8.8, I'd just keep it stable, but um, without knowing more about your tank, it's kind of hard to give some, um, uh, real advice on that. Ed's fish, you know, that coarse sponge mat that Corey sells, is that safe to use to scrub algae off the inside of your tank? It is glass. I have extra from a thing I made, uh, with glass. I think so, but I mean, if you scratch the tank, it's not my fault, but I would imagine it's probably fine. Um, I, I wouldn't be super concerned to do that personally myself. Um, but glass tanks, I go crazy with, I'll, I'll use a razor blade on them or whatever. I don't, it doesn't really matter to me with glass tanks. Um, acrylic, you have to be a little more careful though. Uh, Al Gineco says it did it through the iPhone. Okay. Well, there you go. No, well, maybe it's just harder to find on the iPhone people. I don't know. I always find that like iPhone people are maybe like more confused of like, hitting processes just because they're so much more simpler to use than uh, Android phones typically, you know, but I'll, although they do seem pretty like pretty really similar these days, you know, uh, New Mexico Aquatics, when do I decide to remove the new Java fern sprouts and when do you decide to leave them on the mother plants? What factors do you use to decide? Um, here's the deal. Uh, I wait for them to get to be, basically over an inch or I guess in the international world, three centimeters or something like that, whatever, whatever this is right inch and a half, you know, once that leaf starts to take form, uh, then I'll just pop them off, um, or allow them just to, to fall off on their own. You know, uh, if you just let them fall off on their own, then they're totally ready to go. But once the little, little sproutlet has, uh, you know, has a little bit of definition that it is a plant, you can just generally get it off of there. Uh, Michael Warner says, am I coming to Oregon this weekend, Q? Well, of course. Yes, I am uh, coming down to the Willamette. I want to say Willamette, but Willamette, I think I'm saying it right. I don't know. Um, uh, Willamette Valley Aquarium Society or Aquatic Society. Is it aquarium or aquatic? I don't know. Um I wanted to say that it was in Salem, but it's in Eugene, I think. I don't know. You guys have to find it on Facebook. But yes, I will be down there on Saturday. Uh, I'll do. I'm gonna do a little song and dance. I got a little, some kind of presentation coming for you. I'm not 100 percent sure what it's gonna be about, but it's probably gonna be about Planet Aquariums. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, wink, nudge. Um, but yes, I will be down in Oregon this weekend. Um, should be a lot of fun. There's a shrimp. Uh, there's a shrimp meet during the day and then, uh, the regular, um, aquarium meeting in the, uh, in the evening, in the evening, we'll have the regular old aquarium meeting with their little, um, I like with their little, uh, with the auction, the, the auction and everything. And, uh, so it should be a lot of fun. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I'm probably just going to be going kind of fast and loose on it, but I do have, uh, some slides together and stuff to try and, uh, you know, help, hopefully give some explanations to people that maybe are kind of freaked out by, um, you know, planet aquariums or maybe, you know, I don't know, something like that. Uh, let's see. The tank is heavily planted community tank with no CO2. I have driftwood, some rocks and sand. I thought the rocks might be raising the pH, but when I did the vinegar test, they don't fizzle at all. Uh, my guess would be it has something to do with the, um, that it has something to do with the sand or the substrate or something like that. Um, but I would also check your tap water and see what's going on with your tap water. Um, the driftwood would lower it. Um, it typically if you're, um, typically if your pH was that high, I would suspect the rocks too, but it sounds like you did the, uh, a little test to see if they're, if they're, uh, affecting the water column or not, but, uh, something in there is driving that, uh, um, something is driving that pH up. Uh, Bobby Bob's basement says, will I be at the shrimp meat also? It is my plan, uh, to be at the shrimp meat also 
in uh, Eugene. Willamette. Willamette. <laughs> um, everybody, everybody up here says Willamette. So I don't know, but that's my bad. I don't know. It's just a more geographical thing. It's not. It's not a cut at you guys or anything like that. But you know how it goes. Alex Netternude, what's up? Let's see. Do you think uh, Shouta Denny puffers and discus is possible? I'm going to set up an 80-gallon tank in about a month, first time with a big tank. Uh, so figuring out what to stock it with is super hard. Um, I imagine that you could mm, to a degree, I think, but... I think between the two types of fish, you could really be financially invested uh, in trying to take care of one or the other, and one could easily become ne neglected. So I, I would think, personally, if I was going to do a discus tank, I would do a discus tank. Uh, if I was going to do that puffer tank, I would do it as a puffer tank. You know, you, you just think about it. Like, the Shadow Denny puffers are like 200 bucks a piece. So if you got four of them... I mean, you're already at like $800 worth of fish right there. And then you're going to throw like two, three, four hundred $400 worth of discus in there and then just try to take care of them all in one tank. So what I would do is just figure out what your budget is and then just do the best of one of the variety that you could do. Like, let's say you had 300 bucks, you could get one puffer, which might not be that good, but you might be able to find some really high quality discus and that's the way that I would weigh it out uh, personally. That's the way that I would do it. Um, you know, you, you could do what you want, but I, I just don't think that it would be that great um, to go, you know, with, uh, trying to mix them together. You know, you just end up with, uh, with stuff. Uh, Swift Aquariums wondering if I'm going to get Indian food tomorrow. Yes, I will be at... Uh, what is it? The Saffron Grill or something like that before the Greater Seattle Aquarium Society meeting. Uh, I will be there for that. I am planning on going to the Greater Seattle Aquarium Aquatic Society meeting tomorrow night, uh, which is down in Fremont. Um, but we shall see. Either way, Corey will be there. Um, I think, yeah, I don't know. I don't want to say who else is going to be there because I don't know. But I know Corey will be there because he's the guest speaker. Um, for that meeting tomorrow and um so that should be a lot of fun i think a lot of people you know hopefully a lot of people should show up for that uh, and see what's going on alex says puffer is the main one just trying to go find something to pair them with uh i would pair them with something that could help clean the tank um you know, help kind of clean up their mess you know i've got the bristlenose plecos in there with um with with my puffers they seem to do a really good job uh and i've got the super reds so they are pretty um they are pretty schnazzy they're pretty schnazzy little um bristlenose pleco that's for sure but uh, i would definitely consider something that will help like clean up the leftovers you know what i'm saying so um and i would also probably take into consideration something that's fairly you know more of an accent fish, I guess, or something like that. Something that would would benefit from the waste and stuff from the puffers. Whereas, like, you know, the uh, the bristlenose plecos, they'll they'll be they'll just be hammering whatever's falling down to the uh, to the substrate and stuff, cleaning up all night long. You know, all night long until the break of dawn, right? Uh, Kaiser on the follow up there says the tap water tests around seven point oh pH. So maybe the pool filter sand. Yeah, I would say it's probably something to do with your substrate or something in there that, that's doing that it would be my guess at this point. Um, I would be interested to find out if you do figure out what it is, but I, I would say that that's my guess at this point of what's going on there. Let's see. We've got a brand new member to the squad. We've got a brand new member to the, to the, uh, to the fam squad squad fam, right? Is that how that goes? Uh, Barbara Jackson. A huge supporter of the channel for a long time here. And uh, I don't know what Thoughts and Prayers Hands was all about there. But thank you very much. I appreciate it. I appreciate all the uh, all the, the generous support from you guys and stuff. I do my best to show up here 
and at least be mildly entertaining and mildly informative, right? Answer some questions, do that kind of stuff. Uh, but we do have to get to the video portion of the show. But we do have a super chat before we go from Rumbust. Swedish crones, 1763. That's them, Swedish crowns, all the way from the other side of the Earth planet. Thank you very much, Joe. I appreciate the super chat action. Um, Sal Valenti, a little while ago, was asking if I am going to Aquashella, Dallas. And the answer to that question is, nope, I am not going. Um, it's, I, I've explained it on a lot of, um, I've explained it as uh, on a lot of the live streams and stuff. And, uh, maybe today's a good day to explain it, but, um, there, the unfortunate side of it is, is that it's extremely expensive to go, uh, to any of the conventions, whether it be the aquatic experience or Aquashella or whatever, uh, Macna, uh, but whatever, whatever convention I'd be going to, it's very expensive, costs a lot of money. And I know, I know that in the grand scheme of things, I think a lot of people, if you said it costs $2,000, they would be like, whatever, that's not a lot. Or because that's more than anybody could spend. They're like, whatever, that's imaginary. It's like me saying it's a billion dollars, right? And you'd be like, oh, it's like imaginary, whatever, right? Uh, but it really is, um, it, it really is a, a, a fairly large investment when we really start to break down the numbers and think about, um, you know, production schedule and stuff like that and what the return is, right? So most of this show is fan funded. Uh, so it is the way I see it, and I might be wrong, the way I see it here is to produce things to help the fans out right? Uh, to either entertain or inform one way or another. Um, that's my goal. That's what I want to do. That's the whole reason I'm here. That's the only reason I even make anything is that I might have taught somebody something. I might've made you laugh. I might've made you think I'm a, uh, whatever, whatever it is in that realm of things. That's the deal, right? Um, last time I went to aquatic experience, I think the grand total was Somewhere in the ballpark of like, I think it was like $2,200 or $2,100 or something. I don't know. It was ridiculous. Uh, plus all of the time missed from working, you know. Um, so, you, you know, you guys, people do have to keep that in mind. And the unfortunate side is, is that when that production money is spent, what can I make from it, Right. I could make a video about walking around at the convention. I could make a video of, hey, here's other YouTubers not making a video. You know, um, I could be like, here's a booth with products at it. Like, I'm not even using them. I'm just like pointing a camera at some booths. Right. So that's not very good. I don't even feel like that's a very good video for anybody to watch. It's like, it's not really that entertaining. Uh, it's certainly not that informative, right? Um, because I still bring in, a, I still bring in products and stuff here to test out, right? So even if I went and I was like, oh, the Fluval bug bites or something, oh, these are new. I'd be like, I could just spend the t whatever $20 it is for some Fluval bug bites and have them here. And shoot a video in depth of like, oh, it's crunchy. Oh, it tastes weird. Oh, it's in my tank. Oh, my fish is eating it. Oh, all my fish died or all my fish are breeding now and they never bred before, right? So, um, and you know, once that money's spent, it's just gone. And then I don't really have anything to show for it. So, um, in lieu of going to Aquashella this year, which there was no sponsorship opportunities because the only sponsorship opportunities that popped up um the only sponsorship opportunities that popped up was from aquashella which was just going to donate money to a charity in lieu of people making videos to advertise aquashella which i think is super weird because if you want people to make commercials for your convention like just pay the people making the commercial just like everyone else 
And if you're going to donate money to charity, just donate it to charity. I don't know. It seems weird to me. It just, I, that whole thing just seemed super, super bizarre to me. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that's just like the the greatest thing that anybody's ever heard of. And uh, maybe I'm just a hundred percent wrong, but that was my take on it was like, I don't understand why you would like ask somebody to do work for you, but you're going to give the money to somebody else. And then it's like, it's the creator's fault for like wanting to get paid for their work. Like, oh, you must hate charity. You know, it's like, no, I, I like charity. Give money to charity. No, no, you hate charity. Like, well, I worked for two days on this project. What? What's the deal? Oh, I gave the money to the charity. I don't know. That, and that just the whole thing just seems super weird to me. And it was still going to cost me a lot of money to go. So um, instead of that, I invested the money in a new camera. I've uh, been saving for a, quite a long time to get a new camera, and it should be arriving here on Wednesday. So we've got a new camera that's going to go into the fold. I'm going to sell off a camera, and I'm probably going to donate a camera at some point in time once I figure out where that's going to go. So that's what I am doing instead. So, you know, does that seem weird? Maybe, maybe it seems super weird to people and they're like, man, that's dumb. And I'm, I'll be like, I don't know, maybe I made the wrong decision, but that's where I'm at. Uh, the way I see it, you know, I ordered in two new shrimp foods that came in yesterday. So I will be trying those out. I ordered uh, eight new plants that uh, from some U.S., a, a U.S. company, all sneaky like. <laughs> <laughs> like I didn't tell them I didn't I didn't I didn't tell them I literally used um my I used my uh incognito PayPal <laughs> so that I ordered eight new plants in from a different company not the aquarium co-op uh some plants that the aquarium co-op doesn't carry and from another um small a small company we'll try them out we're gonna see what that box comes in like right we're going to open it up. We're going to take a look. We're going to see how the plants are. And I'm going to talk to you guys about the plants when they come in. So that's where the funding and stuff goes. You know what I mean? It's like when the computer exploded, um, that was, you know, nine, uh, 1900 bucks or something like that. You know? Um, Bentley Pascal says, donate a camera? Fancy. <laughs> like, yeah, I think, um, you know, one of these cameras is already... Uh, one of my old cameras is claimed already, so that is going to be sold off to uh, Rafaela, who uh, has already like put her sticker on it that she's like, I'm buying that. And it's like, cool. You show up. It's here for you. Um, so I'm probably, I'm, I'm kind of undecided at this point, but I'm probably going to donate one. I'm also waiting for the uh, NAB convention to happen because uh, I want to see what Canon's going to release in about a month or something. Donna is keeps being quite adamant about the art behind me. <laughs> this old fish painting back here, uh, I started painting that months and months ago and I just haven't touched it at all. I have not had any time to paint anything. Uh, we have a new family. I, we have a new family member. Olivia um, has been very busy. I keep getting booked for construction jobs and stuff like that, which is great. You know, that means there's more money going into the funding and stuff like that. And um, it has been extremely busy. It's been very, very busy. I'm building a new studio downstairs. So whenever I got any spare time um, so I can actually move out of this room and, uh, you know, get maybe a couple hours of painting a week or something like that. But um, I hope to finish that painting someday. But no one has commissioned it or anything. So it's not really a pressing. Um, it's not really a super pressing deal. Uh, to get that painting done. So it's just kind of chilling back there. It's just kind of a background thing in the meantime, because uh, I don't have much of a background right now. <laughs> uh, uh, this room that I'm in is actually going to become, as you can see, there's some, there's some baby nursery stuff already in here. So it's like 50-50 in here. It's more like 60% baby stuff and 40% my office at this point. Except I still got my rug, you know what I mean? So, um, 
yeah, that's what's going on with that painting. Some someday somebody will commission it, and I'll be like, oh my god, I gotta finish it. <laughs> um, a Swift Aquarium. The <laughs> my wife <laughs> said my wife has banned the cooking of rapashi in the house. I use the camp stove and cook it out on the porch. Oh, hot tip, hot tip for you guys. Um, the rapashi shrimp souffle. So now I don't know about the other rapashi types, but the shrimp souffle works great as a tank amendment. Which means you just take a little bit of that, and then wherever you you got a good amount of flow in the aquarium, you can actually just drop your hand in there and give it an old one of these right here. You know, like a yeah, you know, like don't like clump, leave a clump in there, but like get it in there and then like agitate it and let it blow around the tank. Uh, and all the little all the little scavengery type people will uh, they'll get all over it and do it. it works great. I do it all the time. Um, the Fish Tank Barn, uh, with a $5 Super Chat, uh, he's going to get us on a little sidebar here real quick, so uh, bear with us, but uh, with a $5 Super Chat, says, thanks for the show, Joel. How do you recommend for carrying camera equipment on a plane? Okay, I can break this down for you, because I actually have, I actually have, ah, I just killed my phone. Uh, but I have my camera bag right here, so I'm actually going to hold it up. As you can see, it's got like different liners in it and different pockets and stuff like that. Oops. It's a, it's a very specific camera bag, and I can put my lenses in it. I can put two camera bodies in it and all my batteries in it. And those are the three things that need to be on the only carry-on that you're bringing on with you. Lots and lots of batteries. Your lenses, do not send your lenses in the body of the plane. And your camera bodies, do not send them into underneath the plane, in your luggage. Do not, do not, do not do that unless you are fine with losing them. Um, they will get, they can get damaged, they can get lost. I have had luggage lost before. And when it's your dirty or clean underwear, it's not that big of a deal. When it's a $600 lens, right, you will lose your mind and also not have the tool with you in order to do the thing that you need to do, right? So you'll be missing your lens or your camera. And if that's the trip that you're going on and you're trying to shoot video or pictures or whatever on that trip, they will get lost. Terrence Blanton brings up a really good point. You better get TSA pre-check. Um, it is 100% worth it. It does take some time. It does take some effort. And it does take a little bit of money, but definitely get your TSA pre-check. If you can get World Pass, that, get that too. Um, but Or what is it? Global Entry. Yeah, if you can get that, get that. But um, always take your lenses, your body, and your batteries in your carry-on bag. And only bring one carry-on bag with you. Do not be the guy with a backpack and a bag. Don't be that guy. Bring one carry-on bag with you. Check a suitcase. I have a big, I have one of those those big hard body suitcases with the wheels on it. Stuff everything else you need into that thing and check one bag. Costs like twenty five bucks. It might, unless you have like a really terrible airline, it might cost you fifty bucks. But have your carry-on one bag with you. Check the other bag with all of your laundry and your bathroom stuff and all that kind of nonsense. Throw that all in there. All the cable connectors that you don't need on the airplane, any of that kind of stuff, that all goes in there. You know, your SD cards, your lenses, your batteries, your bodies of your cameras, all that kind of stuff goes in your carry-on bag that you keep with you no matter what. I'm going to say if... Let's say that I have my camera bag with me and it's $4,000 worth of stuff. I don't know. Let's just say it's that much. It's a real terrible day if that gets lost or, or whatever. <laughs> you know, that's a real terrible day. And that's a real terrible day to deal with. Um, you know, if we're talking about my laundry and the bathroom stuff, like I might have to talk, t stop by a drugstore where I'm at and maybe... Uh, Maybe if they got a cowboy store or something like that. 
<laughs> but do not let them check your bag. And one of the easy ways to get them to not be allowed to check your bag is that the FSA requires that lithium ion batteries, here are four of them right here. If you have more than, I think two, and I might be wrong here, you have to double check it, but um, I always make sure that I have 10 of them with me. <laughs> but I think it's two or four of them. You cannot put them underneath into the, into the check area, right? They can't go down into the check bag. So if you're going to get on the plane and the lady is like, or the, the dude, whoever, at the front is like, we have to check your bag, sir. Sorry. You just say, nope. No, you can't. And they'll ask you why. And you'll say, because the, the contents are extremely valuable to me. And then they say, okay, but we're still going to check the bag. And you say, no, unless you insure this for like, just pick a number, like five times the amount. Like, let's say if my bag was worth four grand, just be like, unless you insure it for $20,000, <laughs> Unless you guarantee that if it gets lost, you give me $20,000, right? And then if they still hold you at that, then you say, I've got 10 lithium ion batteries in there. I can't check it legally. It's sort of the last card to play. Um, but the, the, um, the FAA, that's what it is. The FAA, not the FSA, the, uh, food, it's not food services of America. <laughs> Uh, the FAA will not let you check a bag underneath into the belly of the plane with too many uh, lithium ion batteries. Uh, Joel, I've worked for one of the two big airlines for 23 years now. Never, never, never put anything valuable in your check on luggage. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, the check bags, I'll put tripods, um, you know, extra cords, cables, outlet plugins, adapters, all that kind of stuff. I just put all that stuff in the bag. Um, typically an airline will reimburse you or, you know, if they lose the bag, they'll, tr they'll, they'll try to make it right. And typically every time my bag has been lost, they found it and got it back to me at some point in time. So whether that was convenient or not, eh, you know, um, I've literally been on a backpacking trip and they lost the backpack. Um, they lost a backpack that had the tent and um, it had our tent and our sleeping bags and all that stuff. <laughs> and um, yeah, that was, that was pretty fun. Cause it was like, where are we going outside? We don't have anything. Yep. Okay. <laughs> but they did eventually find them. Um, and they got them out to us and it wasn't, it wasn't convenient, but it, it, you know, it happens sometimes. It's just, that's just the way it is. You know, I think, um, they said, uh, one day there was 200, 200,000, there's 200,000 people going in and out of just SeaTac, just this airport right over here. So stuff gets lost. You know what I mean? It's just the way it is. Um, <laughs> Terrence Blanton says when you pull out the extremely dangerous lithium ion battery to show TSA and they get hashtag triggered. Yeah. Um, it's just one of those things, you know, it's just one of those things that, uh, that you, you don't want to put your camera bodies or your lenses in, uh, in a check bag, mainly because, uh, not because they're going to get lost or anything like that, but they will get jostled around. So like, this lens right here, uh, this has a stabilizer in it. And, um, you know, if you bash this thing around like a ton, it could just get off center. And, you know, if you're flying somewhere and then you go to use your lens, you're like, wait, this isn't focusing right. What What's going on here? And then you have to try and find a store somewhere you've like never been, like Germany. And you're like, I need you guys to fix my lens. And you're not really sure what euros are. You know what I mean? This can be totally crazy, but yeah, just carry everything with you. Oh, we gotta go to the uh, we gotta go to the video. We gotta go to the video because that's what the title of this stream was all about: aggressive aquascaping. 
and that is darn right. You know, when you get a 240 gallon aquarium and you get things going on it and, um, you know, you're having, uh, you know, you're having troubles even catching the rest of the rummy nose tetras out of it, <sighs> which is infuriating at this point, but it is what it is. You have to start getting aggressive. You know, I definitely let the 240 kind of overgrow and, um, you know, it's my own fault. I admit it, 100%. Um, I've, I've let it overgrow too far, and this is generally generally what happens when I have to start making up, you know, I have to start making up ground <clears throat> against this tank, um, you know, recovering it, and it just means I got to just hack into it and go big time into this thing and just, you know, I just have to, I, it's just the way I have to go about it. Like, there really is no other way to recover. Um, there's no way to just, like, limp it along now uh those of you that saw this tank on uh lucas brett's channel um i think i dropped a bit of a uh, bombshell on there that uh, i've been running this tank to try and get to zero water changes and um after some months and months and months of doing it um we're just kind of running into some imbalance stuff and i'm just not you know i just haven't been able to get this tank to be like forget about it you know what i mean like there'll just be there'll just be no water changes ever guys but um i do need to get back into the habit of doing a water change about once a month so that's um about as good as i can get with this specific tank right here without really kind of going over the ledge you know what i mean and um that's that's just kind of where we're going to be at right now let me read the chat a little bit and see what's going on here while i drink some coffee Oh, yeah. Delicious coffee. The daylight savings is kind of crushing me a little bit. Scottish Aquatics says, Hey, Joel, I found... Or I finally upgraded my CO2 system and have a nice setup, so my tanks are going to be something else real soon. All right, man. That's good to hear. Um, when you pull the extra... Do, 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 do. Oh, sorry. Uh, Kyle Knudsen says, Are you getting some Texas boots down in Texas? Um... No, I'm not going to Texas. Uh, I mentioned that earlier in the show, so you might have to rewind if uh, that's what's going on. Rumbus says, shrimps will find ONIP tabs on the glass. Mine do at least. Yeah, they definitely do. Um, I've actually found it kind of easier to just throw the ONIP tabs in there. And um, the, uh, the in the 240 specifically, the, the bristlenose plecos come out and chew them up down at the ground there and then a whole bunch of shrimp show up and stuff and kind of clean it up after so finding that helps too so i don't even have to stick them to the glass if i don't want to do 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 boop 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 let me see reading the chat reading the chat opossums cods after 50 percent water changes should i wait a day or two or should I immediately re-fertilize and should I do only one fert a day or is it okay to do three ferts all at once? Um, when you do a water change, I am really preferential of um, re-fertilizing the next morning. Um, you could do it right away. Like as soon as you're done with the water change, um, get your dechlorinator in there. If, you know, if that's something that you do, which I typically do. Uh, get your dechlorinator in there, let that go for 10, 15 minutes, something like that. By that point in time, it's, it's, it's already dechlorinated what it's going to dechlorinate. Um, and then, uh, you can add your, your fertilizer, but, uh, I, you know, I think it's more just like a personality trait thing than anything else. Like you could do it right away, but I kind of just, um, but I kind of just like do it the next morning normally. Cause I'm like, ah, I feel like I got my water change done. Let's let this sit for a while, and then I'll get it the next morning, you know. Uh, Genus Jasper says, can I tie Hygrophyla penitophyta to an underwater branch, and will it eventually stick to the branch by itself? Yes, 100%. Uh, it's a lot like uh, it's a lot like Anubius that way, that its roots will grab onto whatever surface that it is, the roots are touching, basically. Uh, it'll grow, and like, it's kind of cool, because the roots will actually grow, like, around to the shape of whatever it is right next to it. Do, 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 do. Um, New Mexico Aquatics. Joel, have you ever used Choya wood for aquascaping? Does it fall apart 
very easily slash quickly. Yes, I certainly have. And I, <laughs> well, as I was reading the first question there, I was like, yes, I certainly have. The reason I don't anymore is because it falls apart and is gone very, very quickly. But it is a fantastic addition for shrimps and stuff like that. So I 100% see why people are using it. Uh, but it doesn't last that long and it ends up just disappearing in my tanks in, in very short order. So I don't do it anymore. It's just really not a big focus for me. Twin Cities Guppies. What's up, Kang Lee? What's going on? Says, hey, Joel. Hope you and your family is doing well. We are doing well. And check out. Oh, man. I have to do it with the other hand. Check out that sweet picture of Olivia right down there in the corner. She's doing great. We, she got some shots today. She was, she's feeling a little bit fussy, a little tired today. Um, but uh, those of you that are really anti-vaxxers out there, if you think uh, me giving Olivia her vaccinations is weird or bad, um, it's nonsense. I'm going to keep giving her her vaccinations. That's how it's going to go. Grandpa, Dad says it's so that's how it's gonna go uh ba -ba -da -ba -ba -ba. what's going on here oh man my stream is lagging over here even with one million internets i still uh my stream's lagging so i don't know refresh your thing if you're having a problem out there uh terry's tropical tanks know anything about rikia fluithans can I float it long term or should I anchor it to something? Got it yesterday from Lucas on a fluke. Um, I, you know, the problem with um, Rikia is, is that it will outshade the base of it. So if you stick it to something or tie it to something, uh, just be sure to continue trimming it. Um, I often just float it in my sumps just because I can't get rid of it. And um, look, I really can't get rid of it. So I just have a tendency to allow it to float in the sump and it does make uh, for, you know, something to tune into and I don't have to cut it that much um, just because it's just kind of down in the sump being a little bit floaty and kind of gross down there and doing its own thing. It's not really blocking anything else out. Um, and then I get to enjoy it down there. I don't find it to be uh, that great in a typical aquascape because it just is super duper duper high maintenance, right? Uh, it's super high maintenance and that's not the name of my game. I might do a lot of high maintenance ish plants, but if something is that high maintenance, I'm just like, get it out of here. You know what I mean? So, um, that's, you know, sort of my attitude or, and, and, or the amount of time I have is probably something that comes into play. Um, you know, it, it, it's one of those things. If I was one of those guys that was making a million dollars by not going to work a, a year, I might be inclined to do some like crazy detailed aquariums and stuff, but you know, ultimately my goal is for the average person that let's say you work 45 hours a week, you commute 10 hours a week, you got, um, some kind of obligation at home, dogs, cats, cute little babies, whatever you got going on. Um, it's something that most people could maintain without too much stress. That's, that's realistically my goal. I, I don't really have, um, you know, I personally don't have plans to maintain aquascapes that are just so outrageously difficult that it's out of the, out of the realm for most people. You know what I mean? So I, you know, I, I've had people that are like, look, I can't afford a CO2 system. I can't afford the Fluval 3.0 lights. I can't afford this part and this part and that part. And I'm like, yeah, I, I get it. I, I mean, that's, this is the equipment that I recommend so that it is easier to maintain a nice looking, a nice looking aquascape. You know what I mean? That isn't insane to, to maintain. Um, obviously the 240 just kind of, I wasn't doing that much maintenance to it for a long time and it would be fine. I could probably just keep letting it grow and eventually it'll turn into something, but I pretty aggressively have to hack this thing back at this point just for what I want to do with it long term, and, um, just allowing it to just kind of be its own ecosystem was a fun little experiment, but the ex experiment has sort of outgrown and outpaced itself. Um, Kyle Dooley says, what's some for 75, a 40 breeder? Yeah, I would recommend a 40 breeder. That's the cheapest, um, cheapest correct size tank, realistically. 
Um, really easy to put baffles in there, get them cut to that, that right size, and not a big deal. Uh, Mr. Stewart07 says, what's that plant in the foreground? You're going to have to check out the video from yesterday. I think I uploaded it yesterday. Uh, that's a star grass. And, um, yeah, I just posted a video about it yesterday. So it's like 20 minutes long. You see me cutting it and messing with it and replanting it and talking about it and, you know, screwing up its parameters. But there's like an overlay that lets you guys, <laughs> lets you guys know that I, like, I think I was like, yeah, this thing needs to be a 6 pH. Which is a little weird, but that's definitely showing uh, how tired I was in that video. But, you know. <clears throat> but that's a, a very um, uh, new video that I can be like, yeah. That's literally a video about that plant. So, yeah, it's a, a Zoesterfolia or Hetananthera Zoesterfolia. However you say that right. Um, really cool plant. I cannot find anybody that's selling it online. Uh, as I mentioned earlier in the show, like one of the things I did was I, I've ordered some new uh, some plants that aren't carried by Aquarium Co-op uh, to get those in. And maybe I can give you guys a recommendation on that. But we're going to see what it's like um, when we get them. You know, to see if it's worth a recommendation or not. If it isn't worth a recommendation, bear in mind, I will... I, I'm not going to throw those guys under the bus or anything like that. But, um, you know, I'll, we'll just, I'll just talk about the plants then and just be like, I got these from the moon. Uh, so the Aquarium Cowboy says, well, wish I could stay, but the internet's not good, so I can't hear anything. Thanks for almost 350 subs. See you later. And God bless. Those are his words, not mine. But thanks for coming out. Uh, da, 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 da. I noticed you don't have a playlist of your plant spotlight videos. What do you think about creating such a, a playlist? I was looking up new potential plants to buy. Uh, Genius, that is the plan. I'm actually making those videos. Um, I believe they are in the how-to videos right now playlist um, or the shorts. They're either in the shorts or the how-to playlist. Um, but I want to build up that playlist and so that I can get it to a point and then I'm going to move them all over and do a playlist um, for that at some point in time. Uh, Sopa Loco made it through the I-5 mess. So if you guys don't know, the Interstate 5 is a disaster and it's super hard to navigate that road these days. And uh, my hat's off to you. I'll be, I'll be, I was going to say knee deep. I'm going to be neck deep in that, uh, that mess tomorrow. So feel your pain. My phone, I dropped it down here earlier, and then I was wondering if I actually did break it or not. Okay, there we go. No, phone's fine. My mom did. Te my mom messaged me back, so I have to get back to my mom, who's grandma now. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Let's see. Have you ever loaned Aquarius? Have you ever done or even interested in a paludarium? I'm a reef guy, but there's something about the wall of plants falling down. Yes, I've done uh, paludariums. Uh, I've done enclosed paludariums in the past. I've done um, wall-based ones. I didn't do any of the wall-based ones at my house. Uh, maybe someday I'll do another wall-based paludarium, but I don't know when that'll be. You know, like there's just not a, a good space space for it here at my property like where it would be where it would work well um without really displacing uh what i would consider to be a better project i have some cooler projects coming up um fairly soon i know that um i've got some collaborative projects that'll be coming up that should be pretty fun um but not paladarians but yes i have done quite a few uh, i need to get some coffee here hold on Man, woo! I feel like it's been like a couple hours, and we're just shy of an hour. Maybe we're just a—I uh, don't know. Maybe we're just running up on the natural end of the show. Scott Schatz, <laughs> sorry, I don't mean to laugh at your last name, man, but I did. Sorry, Scott. Uh, thanks for the advice. I just took six Java fern babies from my main plant. I made a nice fern-covered rack for a different tank. Woo! That's good stuff. That works out. Uh, let's see randy hightower says tropical fish world and pets is coming along quite nicely up in bonnie lake Ooh, looks like they're almost done with the fresh water and starting to set up salt Ooh, i haven't been up there um i haven't been up there 
I haven't been up to Bonnie Lake in quite a while, so who knows? <laughs> ah, I see. Plants grown well on the cheese on the moon. I like it. That's pretty good. Let's see. Uh, Jacob Zeller said, thank you so much for your channel and ease of approaching this hobby. You have inspired me to start up a planet aquarium after not having an aquarium for over 60 years. Oh, over six years out getting back in. I like to hear that. Definitely like to hear that. That is good news. Uh, I'm glad that I could uh, inspire some positive movement on your end. I like that. I like to hear that. I definitely like to hear that. That's awesome. Uh, we got a brand new member here, Genius Jasper. Oh my god, new members coming in on a Monday, the March 11 nerd. Come on now, digging it, digging it. Twin Cities Guppies is a Fluval 3.0, uh, too strong for Anubius plants in a 55 gallon. Um, no, I, I would say no because I've got the Fluval 3.0 on my uh, 120 that's got nothing but Anubias in it, uh, which I might add a couple of other plants at some point in time. I don't think I'm going to be able to keep it 100% Anubias, but um, you, uh, the great thing about the uh, 3.0 Fluval is that you can turn it down and change the spectrums around a little bit. So I do have the... Um, actually, let me see. Let me see if I can't actually um, pull open the... Let me see if I can't pull open the app here. Oh, I got to turn on Bluetooth. Uh, I wonder if I'm probably too far away. I can't, probably can't connect. Yeah, that's going to be a problem. Yeah, I can't connect. I'm too far away. Uh, settings, maybe? No, I don't know where, but either way, sorry, I was gonna open the app there and take a look and just maybe show you guys the uh the settings that i have for the anubius but it's basically um you know just have it tuned way down i have the bright white turned down and basically a little bit of the red on um and a little bit of the cool white you know just to hit that spectrum for the anubius and um you know just hitting that light just right so the anubius has plenty of light um uh, but not too much you know and uh, it works out pretty good. It looks looks nice. I think it looks really nice. Um, I think the first week I did get a little bit of algae growth on the leaves, but it's life sometimes. You will get a little bit of algae regardless. But, um, you know, I got it dialed in, I think, at this point. So, yeah, it seems to be working out pretty good. I mean, I would consider, like, that light on 100% on <laughs> is probably um, – it's probably not too bright for the Anubius, but it probably they'll just be covered in algae. <laughs> uh, Alyssa Bentley says, uh, plus you get a new fancy green name. That's right. We got a brand new member again. We got three new members on a Monday. That's pretty buck wild. I don't, I don't know if we have any new uh, Patreons. I didn't think that we did when I checked. When I checked... Um, I don't know. Whenever I checked my email. Oh, my God. We have a new Patreon also. Johan. Johan. Oh, my God. It's a next level. It's a next level Monday, you guys. We got three new members and a new Patreon today. Oh, thanks, guys. I'm starting to feel I'm starting to feel like. Like, are we going in the right direction? Is something going in the right direction? I don't know. I get depressed sometimes, you guys. So it's not about you guys or anything that's going on here. It's just I get just depressed sometimes. And then sometimes, like right now, I get like high fives from the internets. And then I'm just like, oh, yeah, don't worry. Everything's going well. Just keep working hard, which I'm trying to do. You know, that's what I'm trying to do. Um, Big D Smoke says, not bad. Bonnie Lake, that was Bothell. Bonnie Lake, we built an elementary school. Wait, what? Uh, what's going on here? Last time I was in Bonnie Lake was when we built Bonefish Restaurant. Oh, man, the Bonefish Restaurant. I remember the Bonefish Restaurant. Um, 
Do, 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 do. Barbara Jackson says that she loves the Fluval app. It's kind of fun fiddling with the settings. Yeah, it's definitely one of the... I mean, there are many upsides to the 3.0. Like, it's got a long cord. The light is good, grows plants. But it's you can change the spectrums and everything. It has a timer built into it. It also It's waterproof. Like, there's a lot. There's one downside to the Fluval 3.0. When I lay the inside, like the tender part of my arm, like the inside of it, on the light when it's been on all day, I think it slowly cooks my arm. <laughs> so it's kind of warm. Uh, that's definitely one of the only downsides to it. Uh, Reaver says, what's the difference between a member and a Patreon? Uh, one's just a YouTube membership. One's a Patreon. It's just providing all the options, whatever options people all want. Um, and, you know, once a month we're doing a members only live stream, which regular people can tune into. You just can't comment. You can't comment or anything like that. So it just sort of narrows the field of opportunity for people to be like throwing in questions and stuff like that. And we're going to do that one. We're doing that once a month. We did a test on it. A bunch of people got mad. But I was like, hey, man, you could be mad or you can just become a member. I don't know. You know, like, so, you know, it's kind of one of those things. Uh, at Reaver, member is through YouTube and Patreon is its own site. I think with the member, it's five bucks a month. But Patreon, you can do one as little as one dollar a month. Yeah, that's kind of the thing. Um, and uh, Patreon is a different platform. It's a different website. It's its own website. You can do as little as a dollar uh, a month, whereas the join thing is only joining. You know, it's just on YouTube and it's a set rate. It's like five bucks a month. Um, you know, so it is what it is, but I'm also planning on uh, working on doing some private stuff on Patreon uh, that only Patreon members can be involved in. Uh, as soon as I was working on the learning the software for it, though, um, Patreon released a whole new uh, design for the website, which is fine. I'm not mad at that. It's just like magical timing where I'm like, I was trying to work out the live streaming there, um, or making a show for there, that kind of stuff. Um, and learning the software for it. And then they redesigned it. So I'm like, Oh, I don't have time for this right now. Like, Oh no, I don't know where any of the buttons are. What is going on? So yeah, it has been a little goofy over there for the past week but um but definitely uh, appreciate everybody supporting either way whatever way you can uh and i know somebody was like are we not supporting anymore by watching it's like yeah man of course you are like of course you are but at the same time if i guess look at it this way if you're growing up in a house and you got a mom and dad right and they're they take care of you all of the time right and Every once in a while, your neighbor babysits you. Like, your neighbor is not, like, what didn't help, right? Like, your neighbor did help, but they're not your parents, right? Like, you see how it's just, just like, two different things? Yeah. I mean, it's like somebody that supports at $100 a month on Patreon. It's hard to say that, like, yeah, they might get a little bit more of a priority when it comes to them sending me an email or needing help with something or whatever. Like that's just the nature of the world. Like that's just how it goes. Like if your boss emailed you and it was like eight o'clock at night, right? You might open that email just because you're like, I don't know. I just got to check. I got to see what's going on. And it's that same kind of thing. You know, if I get a random email from somebody I don't even recognize at all and I've never talked to him before or anything like that, it's like, I don't know, man, it's 10 o'clock at night. I'm not going to open that email. I'll let it wait, you know. But if I get an email at 10 o'clock at night from, say, the fishy mailman who's been supporting this show at a very high level for a very long time, whom I very much appreciate, I'm going to open it up and I'm going to make sure that it's not like an emergency thing or something. You know what I mean? Because I'm going to check. Because that's just the human psychology of like, this guy has been super generous for a long time supporting the show to keep it going, right? And, I, you know, so, and that's just human nature, man. Like, that's just how it works. It doesn't mean that, like, the people that show up and watch the show and just comment and that kind of stuff, like, I don't appreciate you, you know? 
but it's just a different it's just a different level. You know what I mean? Uh, River, yeah, the membership from YouTube is a newer thing. Yeah, the um, the membership thing from YouTube is for only supposed to be for channels of um, like f- uh, fifty thousand or higher or something like that. Uh, but we did, I put, we basically petitioned YouTube to be like, Hey, I, I've been on here for like 10 years. Like, is it, uh, can you just go through some kind of verification project to see what's up? Like, and just turn on the join button because uh, let's be honest, somebody that has 2 million subscribers, if they had a hundred members, somebody with a channel that big probably doesn't care about a hundred members. Right. But at whatever we're like shy of 23,000 or something after 10 years right um a channel like mine where hold on i'm gonna literally go look up uh i'm gonna go look up the members right now hold on we'll get an actual live real-time update of the memberships here i look carver's ask good channel which makes no sense the name of it makes no sense it doesn't even make any sense, you guys. Um, we have we. I literally have fifty nine members right now, and that to me is huge. Um, I can go over to Patreon right now and go look at that. We have two hundred and ninety people on Patreon, right? Like that's amazing. It's huge. That's huge to this channel, man. There's over three hundred people supporting this channel. Like, I don't know, dude, that means I'm going to get up and I'm going to make a video and I'm going to come to the show on time and I'm going to blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? (laughs) So, you know, like, it just means a lot to me. It really does. It just, it means a lot. So, you know, uh, the fish keepers just joined the Patreon. Uh, yeah, (laughs) Oh, okay, okay, okay. I don't, I don't normally want to say people's like whole name, and you got your whole name on there. Uh, but Marcus, the fish keeperist, uh, just joined on Patreon. Thank you, man. I, I appreciate. it. I really do. Like, I just went through this long thing where I'm like trying to explain that, like, I do appreciate everybody that shows up and people hitting the like button and all that nonsense. And um, you know, I was on this like long train for a long time of being like, there will be no commercials and there'll be no this and there'll be no that and there'll be da 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 and it's going to be like 100% altruistic. And, you know, to be brutally honest with you guys, like when it comes down to be going like, should I pay my electric bill or make another YouTube video, right? Like that's reality, man. Like it's 2019, you know, like it's just reality. So I 100% appreciate it, and um, yeah, it's a big time. <laughs> Thor says, when my car is paid off, the producer spot is mine. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Full Moon Aquatics is here. What's up? Um, Full Moon says, that little cherub next to your face is super cute. You're darn right, and I'm pointing the wrong direction. Hold on. Let me redo it. That's Miss Olivia right there. That's my sweet baby girl. I love her very much, and... Uh, Yeah, I got all fired up there and just started talking about some nonsense about memberships and stuff. Sorry, guys. It's a little off topic, but, you know, it is kind of the end of the show. And uh, it's like 4.15 already, so I'm probably going to wind it down here because I got to go take care of my baby because she's just feeling a little bit crummy today and uh, just want to go take care of her. But, oh, man. Now we got to hang out for at least a couple minutes because <laughs> Millie Gand, <laughs> Millie Gandaf just saw like a $20 super chat. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, T Riddle saying, so thinking about getting out of the fishes and water beings, what's the best thing to do with used equipment? Um, I think, I, you know, I've, I've been where you're at before. Um, and what I would consider doing is dialing it back. Like, I think we've all been there. Um, and I think we've all definitely been there and done that where it's like you get that multiple tank syndrome. You get the crazy nonsense going on. And uh, the next thing you know, it's like, oh, I've got to do like six water changes today. And I got to clean this and I got to clean that. And I got to do to do. 
hundred percent dial it back. Like don't let the thing, don't let the hobby like take over your life and, and, and take over the stuff that you're trying to do, um, in, in your regular day to day. Like, you know, that when the regular stuff starts overrunning or, or when like the hobby stuff starts overrunning your regular day to day, it just gets to be way too much. So, um, you know, I don't know if you have one tank or 10 tanks or something like that, but almost every single time, um, it's like almost every single time that, uh, I hear this story, it's like the multiple tank syndrome. And the one way out from multiple tank syndrome is sell off the rest and basically, um, basically sell the rest and keep the one nice tank that you have, like the one that you want and simplify it simplify it down any expensive fish that you need to keep sell those off uh and by expensive i mean expensive to take care of right um the ones that the ones that are expensive to take care of are the ones that really become draining um it, in realistic terms you know what i mean like if you have to only feed live foods to a specific fish that will start to drive you nuts when you have to like drive to the grocery store, when you have to like drive to the store and get like only live foods or something like that. Um, you can keep the filtration like super basic um, by having a planet tank. Um, and hopefully with any luck, if you're kind of running just a little planet tank, um, let's say you do have some fish in there. So you do have a little bit of fish food costs and stuff like that. If you are growing plants, you can normally trade into your store and uh, get them to afford the um, the couple of bucks for the fish food. And you can really kind of turn it into a like a breaking even Steven kind of project unless you have like 40 tanks. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just almost impossible to get that. Um, as far as... Okay, so T says, biggest thing is finances, truly. I finished my taxes a couple of days ago and up you know what creek. <laughs> oh, no. I did my taxes the other day. Um, but I have an accountant now do the taxes for me. So I would, um, personally this year, I would double check with some kind of tax person that might be able to help you out. Um, I got super lucky with a good tax person that's helped me out and we, we kind of figured it out. So it wasn't that bad. Um, could have been real bad, but we definitely figured it out and it all makes sense now. So, um, maybe check into that from a personal standpoint, from my own standpoint, like I could have been up said Creek, but, um, you know, I would check with a tax pro and, uh, maybe an accountant, maybe a CPA, maybe something like that, uh, and see if they can maybe figure out like what's going on. Uh, but the easiest place to sell, uh, your stuff would be like Facebook, Facebook realistically at this point in time is kind of the easiest thing to do. Um, as far as like selling equipment and stuff like that, finding a local group, finding somebody, uh, finding people, um, plus the Facebook marketplace, that kind of stuff. Craigslist, I think is still viable, but I think it's pretty clear at this point that like Facebook kind of dominates that because it, you know, it, it's a lot easier to figure out if somebody's a creep, um, off of Facebook. I, I mean, I think at least that's the perception that most people have. So it really has gained a lot of traction. The, um, the uh, Facebook marketplace. So I would definitely go that way, that route. I have a brand new member from Scott McGovern. Awesome. Thanks, man. And I said, and he said, does that make 60? I think, I think it does. We'll have to check. We've got a two euro super chat from Johan. Thank you very much. And, uh, and, and brand new over at the Patreon. Thanks guys. Like, like I said, uh, I said this a while ago and I, I'm not sure if it like sunk into enough people, uh, enough people's brains, but like you could watch all of my uh, things like 950 videos or something crazy like that. And it's, it, you would still equate to less than a dollar a month of income. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know. I forget what it was, but like Swift Aquariums did the math. And I think it's like three weeks if you watched it straight worth of <laughs> videos or something crazy like that maybe even more i don't know but um it would it would be less than that dollar a month if you were over on patreon so i 100 percent appreciate it thank you very much you guys um it, like i said this is this isn't like i'm not i'm not like you know 
I don't know. I'm not fundraising for anything or whatever. I'm just trying to shout out to people, you know. Uh, Big D Smoke says, offer up is good. I've got a few tanks off of there. Okay, maybe offer offer up might be a spot. You know what I mean? Um, a bunch of rice of beans. <laughs> a bunch of beans and rice in my future. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I used to work with a guy um, <clears throat> who regular, or I used to work for a guy who was worth about $100 million, something like that. Um, and he was uh, this dude from Texas. We got along pretty well, but his thing was, is he was always like rice and beans, man, rice and beans, rice and beans, rice and beans, rice and beans. That was his thing is that he was always like, and the the reason he was saying rice and beans was like, just do the work. Don't spend a bunch of money. Um, that was his thing all the time. He was kind of crazy. Um, he had been shot a bunch. Um, he'd been shot a bunch of times by one of his ex-wives. (laughs) <laughs> didn't die so I, I don't know i don't know if he was worth listening to or not we got along all right um but that was one of the few takeaways that i had from him that i thought was fairly interesting that did seem to be appropriate was just remember just like doing that work the rice and beans the rice and beans all the time and uh you're definitely gonna get um uh somewhere to go fish keeper says have i peeped out the new alex jones on uh joe rogan experience podcast yeah i listened to it live um, I listen to a lot of the Joe Rogan experience live because, um, a lot of the older episodes are super crass and yes, they do have strong language on them at times. Um, but nowadays he really does have top tier guests and I don't know if Alex Jones is a top tier guest, but he definitely has people that, um, you know, like today, which, um, he has that guy who's the, um, the vaccine What's this guy's name? Let me see. I got it right here. Uh, Peter Hotez, who's one of the the vaccine experts, right? He's got him on today. Uh, so I would definitely recommend people to go listen to that because that definitely um, – we'll see. I, I just started listening to it, so um, we'll see if it's any good or not. But the Alex Jones one is crazy, and you start to really realize that um, Alex Jones is just one of those guys that goes on – uh, the internet, wherever like his internet network is, and he just says a bunch of stuff, and he doesn't really care. He doesn't fact check anything. Um, he just says crazy things. Uh, fish tank barn, rice and beans could be the only thing he'd eat if he had been shot that many times. <laughs> no, it was um, it's like a Texan Texan adage kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like it just kind of fits in down there. You know. Oh my, I, somehow it didn't get activated, but Millie, uh, Millie Gandalf, uh, coming in as a member today also, and a super generous chat. All right. Thanks guys. We're definitely getting down to the end of the show. Cause I'm getting tired, honestly. Um, and I got to pee. So oh, it's too much information guys. Uh, but I want to thank Scott McGivern, Millie Gandalf, G, uh, Genius Jasper, <laughs> I just read that wrong, and Barbara Jackson, all for becoming new members today. Uh, Millie Gandalf, Johan, The Fish Tank Barn, and Rumbus, thank you very much for all of your super chats today. It's very generous to you guys. Um, you know, I want to just let you guys know, whatever you got going on, just keep working at it. Just keep making those incremental little improvements, and things will get better. Um, sometimes they get worse. But we just keep plodding along, doing our thing, and we're going to get better over time. Uh, That's just kind of how I go about it. I constantly make mistakes, just like everybody else. And, uh, you know, we just keep making those incremental improvements, and things get better and better. And uh, I know that as a testimonial for me being sober for 1,763 days at this point, is that just literally I have up days, I have bad days, I have good days, I have bad days, but I just keep plodding along, and uh, we're going to get there. Uh, just one little step at a time, you know what I'm saying? So I want to talk to you all later and uh, have a fantastic night out there. And, uh, yeah. If anybody knows where CJ Black is and uh, if she could hit the button, thank you.